We are joined now by Shelby Estacado, one of the all-time great University of Tulsa softball players who joins us from Las Vegas. And Shelby, hey, congratulations on being on the all-time team. You were a terrific shortstop, but you also played outfield and, and some other infield positions. So you were the utility all-time player at TU. Congratulations on that. And what does that mean to you, Shelby? Um, thank you. Uh, it, it's truly an honor, you know, like, Tulsa's had uh, great years and great players come through and to be a utility player is an all time like I'm super thankful for that because Coach Jay like when I was being coached by him he just put me wherever he wanted me to. I was like sure I'll just play that position wherever you want. <laughs> yeah and uh, just to follow up on that you were a very good shortstop for two years but then there was a need in center field and so you know, for the last couple of years, you were primarily an outfielder. So you just did whatever there was, what was necessary for the team, right? Yes, exactly. Because I was, I was recruited as an outfielder before coming to Tulsa. And then we, they needed a shortstop. So I played shortstop and then for two years. And then my junior year, I played outfield. And then senior year, I played third base. Well, catching up with Shelby Estacado, let's go to the latest news, which was an unfortunate accident that you had uh, in uh, snowboarding, I believe it was, in, in Nevada or Lake Tahoe. But at any rate, you had a very uh, uh, bad accident. So can you kind of describe what happened? Yeah, so um, I was just on my last run uh, up at Lee Canyon here in Vegas. And uh, we went, I was with some of my coworkers and stuff from Stryker. And um, I went off a jump and I hit it wrong at the end. And landed straight on my back and folded in half and broke my sternum and had a T6 spinal cord injury. But um, yeah, I was airlifted off the mountain. They took care of me at UMC Hospital here. And then after that, I transferred to uh, Craig Hospital in Colorado. And um, they took care of me for six weeks over there, put me straight to work, rehab. And now I'm back home in Vegas doing more rehab and uh, trying to get through this recovery and heal as fast as I can. <laughs> well, and to catch people up with exactly your condition, you at this point are paralyzed from what the waist down or the stomach down, but yeah. the hope is there that you can continue to work on rehab and, and perhaps someday be able to walk again? Yes, um, I have in a T6 incomplete spinal cord injury, so I have no movement, but I gained uh, a lot more sensation back um, below my injury. So um, there's a good chance of walking again. Um, I just have to work hard at it. Um, everyone's different, so there's no timeline to it. It's just depending on your body and how you recover, and it's important to do your physical therapies and just work your butt off every day. Well, you have suffered injuries before, but nothing like this. So what did your experience as an athlete uh, teach you in a situation such, such as this? Yeah, as an athlete, um, I've always had that um, competitive drive and always like nothing's going to stop me from continuing who, what, what um, an athlete I am. Like I'm super competitive. Like I said, I'm driven. Um, I have a really good family support system and my work ethic. Um, it just didn't stop me. I didn't keep my head down. I'm still alive. I'm still living. Um, still the same Shelby. I'm just in a wheelchair. That's it. But um, I try to do as most uh, the things I did before. I can't do some things, but I'm learning how to be more independent and um, I don't know, stay strong. That's how I've always been. So, and to go sideways a little bit, you know, you had the great career in softball at Tulsa, and we'll get to some of that, Shelby. But you also played baseball uh, with uh, USA Baseball, uh, mm -hmm. and those folks have really stepped up in the wake of of your injury. Uh, USABaseballShop.com has an account uh, where people can support uh, your your rehab and, and obviously some of the medical expenses you have. So we urge people to go to usabaseballshop.com and there's also a bracelet. You could either just donate or you can also buy a bracelet, which is uh, we've got your back Esto bracelet. And she's got it right there. And uh, so, I mean, that is, that is big time. And obviously USA Baseball, uh, those folks really stepped up for you. Yeah, a few of my teammates, they, uh, they had a surprise for me and I didn't know what it was and they came together to design uh, these we got your back bracelets with my number Esto 23 reversed and um, I was super blessed they, they've been there supporting me everyone I can't believe how many people have reached out to me like after my accident 
and people I haven't heard from in a while since middle school, elementary school, but um, yeah, all the proceeds, uh, donations, 100% of them go to me and um, it helps me and my family out a lot. So I appreciate absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And again, that's usabaseballshop.com and make your donations uh, today and uh, uh, support one of the great all-time athletes uh, at the University of Tulsa. Taking us back, uh, Shelby, to your career, um, you know, you came here, came to Tulsa in 2015, had a terrific career. You're number four on the all-time list of home runs and, and a top 10 in several other offensive categories. What are you most proud of? I honestly am most proud of I chose to go to Tulsa. Like, you know, um, that gut feeling when I came there, the team, the coach, Coach Jay, Coach Chrissy, um, I was with Coach 2K, Kendra, and Sandra, like all the coaching staff, like, um, the, the experience I had there uh, with the school and the people I met, um, I wouldn't trade it for anything. And that was like one thing I'm super thankful for is choosing Tulsa and playing for their team. And you had a chance, obviously, to play for some very high stakes. Uh, three times, of course, going to the NCAA regionals and then playing for conference championships and that sort of stuff. Uh, what, what was that experience like to be playing at some of the highest levels of college uh, softball? Yeah, that experience is like no other. Um, being chosen like as a the all-time utility player, um, I see all my videos and our past videos pop up, and it brings back great memories. So I just picture us going to OU, and that my junior year we almost had it uh, to make it win a regional and go to Supers. That was one big memory of mine, and then just playing against other all-time great athletes. Uh, it's pretty great how small the softball world is and just to experience that at a D1 level. And it's like no other experience. So I loved it. Yeah, and you mentioned, of course, the 2017 season. You were three outs away from advancing to a super regional. Uh, yeah. What a great uh, run that the team made. And unfortunately, some things happened. Obviously, OU is a very good team and they they got a, a couple of hits and a couple of home runs and advanced to the to the if game, if you will, the championship game. But what do you remember about that series? Because I know you hit the ball awfully well. I think you hit a home run against the Sooners. What do you recall about the region? Yeah, um, so I do remember hitting that um, that home run, and uh, I think it was against Paige Parker. I was I remember that. I remember it was a changeup. I honestly remember that. And um, I wasn't. It wasn't my best season, but I was. Uh, you know, we peaked at the right time. And it was, I remember that that's like super important. And we peaked at the right time. And um, I remember they did the shift on us with Tori Stafford up to bat. Nobody was in left field. And she just roped it right to left field where nobody was at. And then we just kept scoring. And um, all the little uh, things we did during that game, like in the crowd, I remember our fans, they were cheering for us. Like, uh, I forgot what the song was, but there was a, uh, they were like, who you with Tulsa? Who you with Tulsa? And we just took the crowd away. And OU, I just remember the fans, I don't know, they were shocked, they were quiet. And I've never heard it like that quiet before, but um, it was just, that was one of my favorite games. I can, I'll always remember that game. Emily pitched a really good game too, so. Yeah, and there is a certain sense of, uh... Uh, I don't want to, devastation. I don't know if that's the right word, but there was a certain sense of loss when that game went the other way. Now, oh, you earned it by hitting the ball. It wasn't like you gave it to them, but it was had to be awfully disappointing when that game was over. I know it was, and um, we still had another chance that following Monday, I believe, and um, we just uh, we had it that day. But you know, uh, they're a great team, and. Um, we always put up a fight against them. I remember every time we play them, it's always, it was always a close game, like one, one nothing ball game or one run, like two run difference. But um, I always enjoyed playing them. Yeah. And that was your junior year in your senior year. You get off to an interesting start because you ended up breaking your jaw and losing a couple of teeth uh, mm -hmm. in a situation where a ball hit you in the face just before the start of the season, your yeah. senior season. But that didn't set you back. I mean, I know you're dealing with something right now that's much far, far, far more difficult than, than that. But you did fight through that at the beginning of your senior season, getting hit in the face. Yes, I did. Um, I lost two teeth. I have like eight root canals. And my whole left side was 
fractured. But, um, you know, I told Coach Jay, I told the doctors, I was like, I can still move my body. I can see. I don't have a concussion. Like, just my teeth. I can still function, like, normally. Like, but they, um, I had to convince, I was like, I'm fine. I promise you, I want to play. This is the first, like, weekend we're playing at McNeese. So they put me in the outfield, in left field, and I had to wear a face mask. First ball, like, hit of the game goes to me. And I, like, I remember it's going over the fence, and I, like, hop up and rob it right over the fence. And I was like, oh, my gosh, of course it comes to me. But um, I don't know. Nothing just hold me back. When I was hurt, I just felt stronger. Um, I don't know. I just knew I could push through it and play like I knew uh, normally do. And that 2018 season was another good one for Tulsa, although it ended uh, against uh, Missouri, unfortunately, in the same place at OU. What was that feeling like when, when your career, when you realized your career was over? Yeah, um, it brings back, I remember I, it, it was uh, me, it was my last at bat, um, but I remember I grounded out and crying and um, just realizing like, this, I mean, it's done now. Four years goes by quick, but, um, you know, I don't know. We talked about it. We get together at the end. We reflect on our season, and we just enjoy the moment right there. And um, it was a definitely sad feeling. Like, I I don't know. You're, you grow up being a softball player. You make it to college. You play at the highest level, and, and then it's over. I don't know. <laughs> it's a – yeah. Yeah, and it's it's difficult in the moment, certainly. But as you look back, it's just such a rewarding experience, I'm sure, for you as you look back on your entire career to you. No, it is. It is 100%. Um, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I'm, I'm glad, like, I chose the sport of softball. Like, I've made so many great memories there. And then, of course, you know, getting a degree at TU, that's been certainly valuable to you and something you'll continue to use, I'm sure, huh? Yes, yes, my business degree. So I've been, um, I took that uh, back home to Vegas. And so I work uh, for Stryker Medical and I work in the OR at Centennial Hospital over here. And so I just help uh, run surgeries and set up my equipment, Stryker equipment. And I'm there to troubleshoot anything, make sure everything flows through the surgery. And if anything breaks, I replace it with uh, my tools and I'm always like on spot like whenever somebody needs me in the OR another room I hop over make sure everything's good hop over to the other room do another surgery so it's a pretty cool environment I like uh, that professional work environment for me so after your career was over at TU you didn't stop playing though but you you continued to play baseball because that 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 you know you you'd love to play obviously and baseball is a little different how different was baseball for you as you made that adaptation, not only during your career to you, but then after? Yeah, it wasn't uh, completely like different. I mean, the field's bigger and stuff, but I played baseball till I was 13. And then once I went to high school, I switched over to softball, but playing um, with USA Baseball, um, it's a big step and a big accomplishment for me because playing for USA, your country, wearing the red, white, and blue colors, everyone on my team we are on the same like playing level our mentality towards the game like our passion our heart like our baseball IQ it's just crazy how much of a difference like from playing in college to the USA level it's um it's just a great experience for anyone I would say and um they've been supporting me through my injury right now so they've always had my back and um I love them so much there's a lot of similarities, obviously, between softball and baseball, tracking the flight of a ball, picking up grounders and that sort of thing. But the, the, what appear to be the biggest difference is, is the pitching. You know, you're, you're used to down under when you're playing softball, and now you got people that are thrown at you, overhand, sidearm, whatever. Was that a big adjustment for you in terms of that, plus curveballs and other, other, other things that, that are kind of indigenous to baseball? Yeah, it is different. The ball's coming at a different plane. So... I mean, you have to adjust to it, and you, that's why we practice, and um, our pitchers are great. The ball, the spin, like, everything is just coming down, and those curveballs are uh, what get me. They are really good. Japan, um, they have a really good pitcher, and she, um, she's, I respect them so much, but they, 
the pitching, you have to get used to that. And then um, the speed of the game is different and um, the throwing distance is different. But um, since I did play it before and most of our girls, they played softball and baseball or just baseball, um, I was able to, I'm super athletic, so I was able to switch back and forth like from softball to baseball and pick it up pretty quick. Shelby, we had a chance, of course, to meet your mom and dad during your time at TU. And you're from Las Vegas, but your dad is Hawaiian, so you have a very interesting heritage. Your mom is German, but your dad, I think, is is the most interesting because he's Hawaiian of Portuguese descent. So kind of describe that a little bit. Yeah, so my dad, he grew up in Hawaii, uh, born and raised. He was there when it wasn't a state yet, and um, but he... Uh, he's from, uh, grew up in Hana, Maui, so that's where we go all the time, and uh, my mom's from Kansas, she's German, they met in Hawaii, but he's uh, known as Maui's Hawaiian Cowboy, he's a famous singer over there, so the Estacado family is a uh, name well known over there, and um, my mom, she works at Sunrise Hospital over here, so the reason why we came back to Vegas is because they wanted my mom back at Sunrise, so my dad, you know, loved her so much, sold all his stuff, and <laughs> brought my older brother. They had my older brother in uh, Hawaii um, and came to Vegas, so I grew up here, and it's known as, Vegas is known as the Ninth Island, so we got a lot of Hawaiians out here, too, and, um, but it's a pretty interesting mix I got, but I like it. I grew up hula dancing, so I keep my uh, Hawaiian heritage close to me, and I still do it to this day. Even though I'm in a wheelchair, I'm, I can dance a little bit, so. Well, there you go. And we saw that hula dance uh, two or three times, I believe, during the Golden Cane Awards. And we appreciated, we appreciated you showing us uh, your talent. And I know that you were proud of being able to do that. Yes, I was. I know. I was really happy I was able to do it my senior year with my brother. So um, we did that together. And it was a good, a good Golden Cane Awards to end on for me. Shelby, what would you say to folks that have to overcome problems and issues because you are in quite a battle. What are the things that maybe you learn from to you and what do you say to, to kids, uh, you know, younger folks and that sort of thing that have to battle through these sorts of adversities? Because I, I know you and I know that you're just plowing right through it and going right at it. Yeah, um, just growing up, uh, I was always, I was, I grew up with brothers and stuff. So I was always super tough and, um, my strength mentally and physically, um, I've always known to keep them in balance and in check. And anytime, cause your life can change at any moment. So you gotta, I don't know, live your life to the fullest. And you know, um, whenever, whenever something like this happens, like I have a spinal cord injury, I never thought that would happen in my life, but I'm still alive. I'm here with my family. I have the best support system I could ever ask for. And I just, I'm the same person. Like I'm Shelby, I'm, I know I'm still that athletic girl. I'm still that, I still have that competitive drive. I don't show people like my weakness. I'm not, I'm not crying, I'm not mad. Like I'm still gonna push through this and look at the best opportunities. Like. I feel like God has a bigger purpose for me now and I want to be like an advocate for other people with spinal cord injuries or other people going through difficult times like I I can't walk like that's not what everyone uh, thinks is going to happen to them but it happened to me but you can't let that uh, determine like the rest of your life how you're going to live it like you're going to be sad or you're going to be happy you have a choice so there's always a choice. My choice is to be happy, work my butt off, and my goal is to walk again. And so that's what pushes me. Don't bet against uh, our, our young lady, uh, Shelby Estacado, uh, to, to battle through this problem. And, and we know that uh, uh, don't, don't bet against the possibility that she's going to walk again. And, and we do want to put that out there again. Uh, USABaseballShop.com. Go ahead and, and donate to you fans, all softball fans. Uh, Shelby, thank you so much for taking the time. And, and good yeah. luck in that battle. And we will talk to you again. Thank you. I appreciate it. I have one more quote, though. I got from one of my patients at one of the patients I met at Craig. He told me um, 
you always have good days and tough days, never any bad days. So I always live by that. And then another guy wheels to walking. He's a guy in a wheelchair I follow and he inspires me every day. Um, he says, try hard at everything you do. Those simple words, like try hard at everything you do. So that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to be more independent in my life and I don't know, it's making me happy. <laughs> Shelby Escado, thank you for taking the time, appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome, thank you. Thank you.